uh, what is the impairment loss fair value the difference between fair value and net book value so net book value is 100 fair market value is 70 million so it means we are going to record impairment loss of 30 million dollar in our income stream right so let me ask one by one whether you understand or not so florian you understand lota ploy sir i don't understand can you do it again from step one step two good okay here we go so don't get confused about the word impairment impairment you can say that just decrease in the value but it is used for uh, <clears throat> natural resources and intangible assets for tangible assets we have a word depreciation right so there are two steps uh, the law the gap generally account journal account, uh, generally accounting uh, you know an accepted uh, principles they say that the asset must be tested for impair impairment at least once a year and there are two tests uh, two steps to record the impairment loss number one you compare the book value with the estimated cash flow so lucky you you would be given this one because and if you are in finance class then you have to calculate this this is a financial calculator special type of calculator who calculate all this future value for you guys so so in 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 in, in nutshell i'm going to tell you that estimated cash you know flows are that from this mine or from this patent how much cash inflow is going to be during this for example it is at for like remaining 10 years so within 10 years we will receive this much worth of amount in future we just add it so there's a formula for finance such like that so you compare net book value with the estimated cash value if the net book value has increased then it means asset is impaired but how much you compare net book value with the fair market value or fair value the difference between net book value and fair market value is the impairment loss not the difference between net book value and estimated cash flow no because law says that there is no judgment should be involved when writing down anything in financial statements no judgment everything should be precise backed by hard evidence no judgment no failing nothing involved right so net book value minus fair value is equal to your impairment loss so we had let me just talk about uh, illustration so we talked about that that the fast fedex has a long term asset and its net book value is 100 million that the cash going to be received during the life of that asset is 80 million so what is step one you compare net book value with the estimated and you compare that that net book value must be greater than estimated cash flow so it is greater than yes it means asset is impaired right so what do we mean by asset is impaired that we need to decrease the value of asset how much the second step will tell you difference between as net book value and fair market value 100 million minus 70 million is equal to what if the estimated cash flows are 180 and fair market fair market value is 7 70 then asset is not impaired why because first condition is you know it doesn't satisfy first condition is you know it doesn't satisfy because 100 million is not greater than 180 million then asset is not impaired right even though the market value is 70 million but the future cash flow is more than the net book value then asset is not impaired since the future value is less than the book value it means asset is impaired how much fair market value minus Uh, net book value minus fair fair uh, fair value answer is 30 million right now right kathleen understand now
we couldn't hear you. Okay, others. Thank you. Okay. Ploy, Nimesh, Wusion, Fabian, Ali, understand? Yes, sir. Yep. Now, what would be the entry? Simple. The asset imp is impaired for 30 million. Entry would be impairment to the asset. If asset is patents, impairment loss to patents. But there is no accumulated impairment loss here. In deposition, we do have accumulated deposition. We create a contra account of the asset and we see that we accumulate deposition over there to know that how much is the deposition of our assets, how much we have used those assets. But impairment, we don't use accumulated, just simple expense to asset. So impairment is expense, expense increase, debit. So that's why it is debited. Asset decrease, credit, simple. Impairment loss to patents, impairment loss to goods bill, impairment loss to trademarks, impairment loss to coal mine, impairment loss to iron ore mine, uh, aluminium, you know, uh, mine or oil field, you know, petrochemicals, you just discover an oil well. It's like the oil reserve, right? Now, let's talk about the chapter number nine. So up till now, what we have discussed, we have discussed all the assets. Current assets, we have talked about that. We talked about cash. We talked about account receivable. We talked about inventory. We talked about the plant, uh, plant assets, intangible, intangible assets. And now it's time to talk about liabilities. There are two types of liabilities, current liabilities and long-term liabilities. And then we will talk about the honors equity, right? So assets, we just completed that one, right? Now, there are two types of liabilities, current liabilities, contingent liabilities, and the long-term liabilities, uh, uh, current liabilities are, uh, there are two types of current liabilities, current liabilities itself plus contingent liability, like anything that you make a reserve for any contingency, anything gonna happen like that for, you make a reserve for if there's a fire broke out, that immediate expense or there's a warranty claim may pop up, right? So it, con it contains may, but in current liability, you have to pay this much amount, you owe this amount, so you have to pay this amount. In contingent liability, that if, if somebody is sue us the case, if he, the, the, the other party wins the case, then we have to pay. If we win, we don't have to pay. So these kind of, when may involved, may be involved, then we call this this contingent liability. Okay, so let's just talk about that. Current liabilities, there are two kinds, non amounts with estimated amount. Estimated amounts are called contingent liabilities, non amounts are called current liabilities. So we know that this much amount we have to pay to our supplier. Warranty, estimated warranty, how many people apply for the warranty claims? We don't know, we estimate that. If the other party, you know, wins the case, then we have to pay that, right? The chances are that, you know, during June every year, fire breaks, you know, fire broke, uh, you know, break, breaks out in the counties and what happened, you know, they're like also some factories are going to be uh, affected. So we make an estimate over there, but the amount is unknown. So we call this estimated amount. So current liabilities, we also already talked about that. They are account payable, short-term notes payable, sales tax payable, the group liabilities, payroll liabilities, like wages pay, you know, wages payable, uh, salaries payable, Unearned revenue, we all already talked about, and the current portion of long-term debt, and how much from the long-term debt this year, how much is payable. So pretty much 
they all all the same. We already know the treatment. What should be the entries? We already talked about. But if this is like more of recap for you guys, a review for you guys, because we are talking about current libraries. So let's let's just talk about one by one. Account payable. So we are going to discuss from scratch. What is account payable? Amounts owed for product and services purchased on account. So what is our core business? If we are making those goods or we are purchasing those goods for selling, then anything that, sorry, and anything that we purchase on account will be considered under accounts payable. Either we, pre, we purchase raw materials, that is under the payment is to be accounted for in accounts payable. If we are merchandiser, we just purchase finished goods, we keep it ourselves, we are the middleman, and then we sell it to the retailers, then the, the, the products we are purchasing from supplier and we have to pay him later, that account is also accounts payable, right? So common transaction is credit purchase of the inventory that we purchase on credit, simple. Right? So accounts payable turnover, that is more of the finance terminology, but let's just have a little understanding what is accounts payable turnover. It means accounts payable turnover, that how many times we purchase from our accounts payable. What does it mean? If a person is ordering three times from their supplier, what does it mean? It means his cycle of processing the inventory into finished goods and then selling it is like three times a year. So he purchased, he ordered, he received the goods, he processed it, and then he again ordered. It means his business is basically mayor in terms of times a year, a company is able to pay for its accounts payable. So when a person, when a business is having order, an order is receiving, he converts it and then again, book an, another order. It means previous order, if he pay all the money, then he's able to avail the next order or not, right? So we can say that, the accounts payable turnover tells you how much or how many times, basically how many times the employer or the producer or the firm or the business, how many times a business is basically able to pay to its supplier. If three times, four times, what does it mean? It means four times he ordered from the supplier and of course he paid that. So higher the accounts payable turnover, what does it mean? It means you are doing good. It means you are doing, you know, you are making more products. Why you are making more products? Either you have a big order to fulfill or either your sales are increasing. So that's a good sign, right? So accounts payable, turnover, the formula is purchases from suppliers divided by average accounts payable. So we are not going into detail because that is more fine and stuff. So we're just gonna ignore that. Just so we understand the concept, that's enough. So we know that the inventory T account looks like this. So the beginning balance, which is a natural balance of the inventory because inventory is an asset, it has a natural balance of this debit balance, beginning balance. And when you purchase, purchases are recorded on the left hand side on the